Welcome to the DTT Tip of the Week. My name is Brian Pace. A while back I did a video called Setting Up the Backhand Loop in Competition. And the amount of feedback and questions I got was overwhelming. And the main feedback I got was players talking about what to do about backhand looping once the point was actually in play. And that's why I decided to do a follow-up video called Elevating the Backhand Loop in Competition. This second drill is much more complicated and it's the true meaning of elevating your backhand loop in competition. And what the drill involves is making two forehand loops from the corner, one forehand loop from the middle, you go back to the corner, you make another forehand loop, and then your partner's going to block to the backhand. And this is when you go from right foot dominant to left foot dominant. That's when you're going to shift and make a backhand loop. And this is important because from this position, the only position that provides you a balanced attack is being able to come back to neutral. And once the ball goes to the backhand, you go left foot dominant. this exercise a unique identifier is going from right foot dominant to left foot dominant and it's the primary reason that 95 percent of the players haven't been able to develop this type of, of adjustment because being so right foot dominant by the time the ball goes to the back end all the player can afford to do is hold their racket out so you want to make sure when you make this forehand from the wide forehand that you go back to neutral and then when the ball comes you actually turn and go left foot dominant because this is the only way you'll be able to get a quality backhand attack. And really the goal, the goal is to be able to continue your attack. For this exercise, your best piece of advice is shifting out of right foot dominant position once you've gone wide. Because at this point, standing in this position doesn't provide you any opportunity to make a proper backhand loop. And if you always come back to neutral and left foot dominant, it allows you the opportunity to square up to make a backhand loop as well as adding power. This next step is actually up to you, and it's with regards to your comfort level. Once you got to a point to where you are starting to go from neutral to left foot dominant, you want to start thinking about the best location because things inherently can go haywire when you're switching from these two systems of uh, approaching the ball. So you want to make sure that once you are executing shots based on a high comfort level, you want those shots to fit your sequence of play.
Now, the practice match is the moment of truth where you'll find your biggest obstacle is allowing these drills to acclimate to the way that you play the game. Uh, most people have a, a training mode that they're in and they have a competition mode. And you want to make sure that practice match involves um, being able to implement this. I, I'll tell you one piece of advice. Uh, 1994, I'm training in Augusta, Georgia. I'm playing a practice match with Jimmy Butler, and I'm trying to win, I'm not trying to practice. And after the game, he sat down beside me and he said, uh, I played in Sweden and Stellan Banks was my coach. And he walked up to me one day and he said, nobody's ever gonna ask you how many practice matches that you've won. So for something like this, that really needs a transition period because it's undoubtedly you are right foot dominant, but you wanna make sure when you're playing that practice match that you provide the opportunity for your backhand to thrive. To get the most out of this in the practice match, you want to figure out your range. And what that involves is figuring out your range. If you're in a certain range, you're going to whip the backhand loop around. If you're in a certain range, you're just going to make a spin shot. And if you're in the power range, you want to simply let it go. Pop quiz. Look at this sequence of play and choose the best ball placement. Look at this sequence of play and choose the best ball placement based on where the opponent is standing. To get the answer to these pop quiz questions and other questions, go to the link in the description box. My name is Brian. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the table. Coming soon, online training for table tennis. Get the most sophisticated online table tennis training program in the world. Your monthly program consists of developing every skill set in table tennis that will help you reach your full potential. Each month you get eight drills that cover serve and attack, footwork, tie spin play, serving, serve return, Defense, short game, and stroke chemistry. This is the first online program that addresses every aspect of table tennis development in a monthly program. Sign up for online training for table tennis and start reaching your full potential today.